Okay, next we will talk about 3.2.4. We would compare evaporation and boiling. Okay, you may have heard this comparison in high school physics course, but I just want to talk more in terms of vapor pressure. Okay. For vaporization, first of all, let us talk about the microscopic field. That means we focus on the molecular aspects. Okay. We know that inside liquid, the molecules will have a collision with each other. And some of the liquid molecule during the collision, there will be some kinetic energy transfer among those molecules. Okay. Suppose the liquid molecule Ke, that means the Ke that is obtained by collision with neighboring particles is greater than the attraction from the neighboring particles by the intermolecular force between them. Okay? If it's greater than that, then it will leave the surface and become vapor. And also, the gaseous molecule will also have this kind of collision. And if they have sufficient Ke, they can also go back to the liquid surface, so we will have a condensation. Okay? And if the vapor pressure is higher, that means there are more gas molecules inside this uh, vapor, that we will have a higher condensation rate. Okay. And uh, what do we mean by equilibrium is that if the vaporization rate is equal to the condensation rate, then there will be no net mass transfer among these two phase. Then they will be in a equilibrium. Okay. For boiling, it is a very intensive vaporization process in which you supply heat and boil the liquid very rigorously. The boiling happens at the boiling points, and this boiling points depend on pressure. But how about evaporation? There are some difference between evaporation versus boiling. For evaporation, it occurs at the vapor liquid interface, and the vapor pressure will be smaller than the saturation pressure of the liquid at that temperature. Then, because of this, there will be a concentration gradient. Some of the molecules inside the liquid would evaporate and go to the vapor phase. It occurs at any temperature. As long as you have a concentration gradient, then evaporation will happen. And because of the evaporation, the molecules with higher Ke escape from the liquid surface, and it will make the average Ke inside the liquid decrease. So we will have a decrease in the temperature because the average Ke has decreased. However, for boiling, it is different. It occurs at a solid liquid interface. Okay. And uh, it can only occur when the liquid has a saturation temperature or pressure. Okay. And at the solid and liquid interface, bubbles will form and rise to the surface of liquid. So some bubbles will form at the bottom surface and it will rise because we have a hot surface here. It will make this bubble form as well as rise to the surface. Okay. With the temperature that's well above the saturation temperature. That means, for example, for water at a 1 atm, its boiling temperature is 100 degrees C. The heated surface should be some temperature that is well above 100 degrees C, for example, 110 degrees C, so that it can make the boiling process happen. Okay. So this figure shows graphically how evaporation is different from boiling. Okay. For evaporation, only the liquid from the surface can go, and bubbles cannot form because the vapor pressure is less than the atmospheric pressure. Okay. However, for boiling, the vapor pressure can overcome the atmospheric pressure. Okay. During the heating process, actually the vapor pressure will also increase. And uh, if it can overcome the atmospheric pressure, then stable bubble will form, and it can become vapor phase. Okay. So for more details about the mathematical treatment, about the surface tension, how the surface tension of this bubble depends on other factors, please refer to the lecture notes. Okay. This diagram also shows the comparison. Here is a superheated water, that means T is greater than the saturation temperature, but it's still in the liquid phase, then it will be called a superheated water. Okay. If you perturb it a little bit, the water inside this cup will vaporize very rigorously and it is extremely dangerous. Okay? So don't put your cup of water into oven to heat it. Otherwise it will become superheated and it is extremely dangerous. Okay? For boiling, this process will exactly occur at a saturation temperature. Okay? And actually why it will be a superheated water is because the bubbles cannot form very well. So it cannot change to the vapor phase very successfully. Okay? 
actually we need some uh, impurities or some roughness of the container wall to favor the formation of the bubbles okay well for the phase change process please refer to mccann 3410 that is the heat transfer course for more details as well as mccann 2410 Although 2410 is about materials, that course will also talk about some of the phase change process and it will also talk more about how the phase change process can occur. Okay, okay let's go to the next session. Okay, we have said that the saturation pressure is a function of the saturation temperature. Actually, we can have some application from this. Okay, I will just talk about some of the examples here. For more examples, you can refer to the textbook or search from the internet. So the first application is on coolant. Okay, this coolant is actually liquid nitrogen. Okay, and at one atmospheric pressure, the saturation temperature of nitrogen will be negative one hundred and ninety-six degrees C. Okay, and note that some of the N two would evaporate at one atm, and this liquid would still remain at a negative one hundred and ninety-six degrees C because we haven't changed the pressure, okay? Suppose uh, there's a test chamber that we need to maintain it at an extremely low temperature. We need to place it in a liquid nitrogen that is open to the atmosphere, okay? We can perform a very good insulation because this N2 can absorb heat from the surrounding and the test chamber can thus be kept at the same temperature, not 193, 196, okay? Even though there will be some of the heat gain from this, but because some of the liquid nitrogen has been evaporated at the same pressure, so this liquid nitrogen can also be kept at this temperature, and this type chamber will have the same temperature as this liquid nitrogen. And this can achieve good insulation. And uh, another example is CO2 fire extinguisher. Okay? Uh, some liquefied CO2 is kept in an uh, extremely high pressure, because at 1 atm, this CO2 will be in a gas phase. And because this liquefied CO2 is kept in a high pressure, it also makes the saturation temperature increase. And this CO2 is in liquid form. And due to the much smaller specific volume, we can store up larger mass of CO2 inside container. So the fire extinguisher would not be so large that it would occupy room. Otherwise, due to the very low density of CO2, we may need room to store same mass of CO2. Okay, so we have a liquefied CO2 in order to save some space. Okay, the third example is called the vacuum cooling. Vacuum cooling. Vacuum cooling is about that we decrease the pressure to achieve the cooling process. Suppose we want to cool some leafy vegetable, we would decrease the pressure such that the boiling points of water will also decrease because we know that the saturation pressure and saturation temperature are dependent with each other. So suppose this is a starting point of cooling. We gradually decrease the pressure. Okay. And up to this point, it is at a 3.17 kilopascal. At this point, it will be the saturation pressure of water at 25 degrees C. If you further decrease the pressure, then the temperature will also decrease due to their dependence. So it would gradually, gradually decrease up to the end of the cooling process. So it would become 0 0.61 kilopascal and the temperature will go to zero and we can cool the leafy vegetables, okay? And because of this, the water outside the vegetables will vaporize and it will absorb the latent heat from the vegetables, okay? Because we have decreased the pressure, so the liquid water at the surface of the vegetable would become water vapor and this vegetable can be kept at low temperature without using any extreme power okay and another example of vacuum cooling is the ice vacuum process okay we just do the same process but we further decrease the pressure to temperature well below zero degree c the water inside this part will vaporize and this vapor will absorb the latent heat from the remaining water okay so note that here the water uh, one part of water has become vapor, and one part of water has become ice. Okay, so there will be a layer of ice formed here. And note that because ice has a smaller density than water, so it will float at the surface. Okay, 
So this vacuum pump will lower the pressure inside this container and some water will vaporize. So we will have air as well as vapor in this case. Okay. Um, for more consequences of saturation temperature and saturation pressure dependence, please refer to the textbook or you search from the internet.